What's up YouTube? Today I'm going to be doing some upgrades to my dirt jumper but before I get into that I'll give you guys a quick review and tell you what I think about this bike, how it comes stock. First up I'll start off with the grips. These are probably my favourite grips to come on a stock bike. They're pretty much like ODI long necks but they're a little bit harder. Um, I've never had any problems with them twisting or anything so they're pretty sick grips and I'll be keeping these on the bike. Anyway, moving on to the handlebars now. I'm not really a fan of the geometry. The back sweep's kind of weird. It goes like back this way and down. A lot of you guys were commenting and saying the handlebars look bent, but that's just the way they are. Um, they're also made of like a cheaper material, but then again, the handlebars that came on my $2,300 NS made out of the same type of material. And one of my mates, when he first seen the bike, one of the first things he said were the handlebars were sick. And when he hopped on it, he said they felt good too. When I first hopped on it, they kind of felt weird, but I got used to them pretty quick. I'll definitely be swapping these handlebars out. All right, next up, we've got the stem. This is a pretty good stem. It has pretty good geometry. Plus that it's kind of rounded off at the back here. So if you hit your knee or whatever, doesn't really hurt as bad. It's a pretty good stem, but I'll probably be swapping it out since I've got a better one than this one. I'm gonna be swapping it to this NS Quantum stem. It's just got a really cool design to it and I really like it, so I'm gonna be using it and also these handlebars. Moving on to the headset. It's a pretty cheap one. The bearings aren't sealed. But then again, on my $2,300 NS, I had a loose ball headset too. All right, moving on to the RST Dirt Forks. This is gonna surprise a few of you guys, but I actually reckon these aren't too bad, these forks. For a younger and lighter rider, these would feel really good. The main points I don't really like about them is they don't have a thrill axle, but if they did, obviously it would bring the price right up. Most entry level bikes come with these on them anyway. They feel pretty weird for me because I'm really used to stiff forks. The adjustability is pretty good, but they just don't allow you to set it hard enough. I actually have the suspension on my trail bike set harder than what this one allows me to go. I'm definitely going to be swapping these out because they don't suit someone that's the weight of me hitting the kind of stuff I do too. I'm going to be swapping these forks out for the Manitou Circus Expert forks. They should look really good on the bike because they have the black stanchions and these are just really good forks for the price. Moving on to the front wheel. This front wheel is actually pretty good. I'll give them a quick spin and show you if they're buckled at all. So yeah, they're pretty straight. There's a slight buckle to them. I thought the rims on the Maverick were gonna be a problem at first because the spokes came really loose straight away, but once I tightened them up, they were all good. The rims are pretty thin, but they actually held up all right. And the hub's actually pretty smooth for a stock hub like this. All right, moving on to the tires. These are Kenda K Rads in 2.3 inch width. I actually reckon these are really good tires. Great for all around use. Good for the dirt jumps, street and skate park. I'll be keeping these on here for sure for now. I'm gonna get to work on swapping some of these front end parts out. There we go, that's the front end part swapped over. It looks crazy with that yellow front wheel. But I'm so stoked on how it looks all blacked out at the front there. The bars look sick on it. 
everything just matches up so well apart from that front wheel. I'm going to be building some new wheels up for it. I've had these ones for about four years so they've served me well. I'll probably just keep them as spares now. Need new bearings and that harbour to be grimy. Alright, moving on to the seat. I really like this seat. It has a cool design on it. It's pretty comfortable. It's got a bit of grip on it too. And it's just built for the bike, so why bother changing it? Usually I rather pivotal seats just so you can adjust it and get it perfect, but this one's already like on the right angle for the bike, so it's really good. All right, moving on to the seat clamp. I really like this seat clamp. It suits the bike. It's not sharp in any way. It'd be nice and light, I'm guessing, and obviously it does its job. I'm going to keep the seat and seat clamp on here. I really like those two. All right, moving on to the crank set now. These are just regular three-piece BMX cranks. Shouldn't really have a problem with these. Moving on to the pedals. These are just Walgo pedals. They're actually pretty good. They've got no play in them. They're not spinning crazy fast or anything. Um, the pins are a bit smaller than what I'm used to. And the platform's not as big as what I'm used to, but they're pretty good pedals. All right, moving on to the sprocket. It's pretty thin. I've got some Colt two-piece cranks on my old dirt jumper that I was thinking about chucking on, but these should be good for now. And I'll probably run mountain bike cranks on this anyway, so probably get some intuitive descent cranks for it. The Dirt Dog has a KMC chain. It also has a sealed bottom bracket. All right, last of all, I've got the back wheel. The same thing that happened to the front wheel happened to the back wheel where the spokes came loose. But once you tighten them up, it seems to stay pretty good. Other than that, I would say the rim probably exceeded my expectations. I thought I would have buckled this, but it's pretty good. It's got a little bit of a hop in it, but barely anything. The back harbour also exceeded my expectations. It didn't skip on me once. It's pretty quiet. It makes a little bit of a noise. It's kind of like a mountain bike hub where you can um, take the sprocket off and change sizes if you want to. So it's pretty sick. I'm going to be swapping this back wheel out still because my other one's just a lot better. Look at the difference in the thickness and I'd probably say this wheel's still lighter. With the wider rim on there now and the 2.3 inch tyre, all the way slammed, it hits against the frame, so I just shorten the chain and it won't actually work now because it's going to be too close there. There we go, that sounds a bit better and it spins for way longer. This hub's really four years old and it's still pretty neat. Only the teeth on the um, bolt there have worn out a bit. That wasn't actually the last thing, I forgot about two more things. First one was the brakes, comes with Tektro areas or something like that. Cable operated disc brakes, they are actually pretty good, but I hardly really even tested them, I took them off straight away, but when they were on there they did work. And the last thing for real now is the frame, and it's easily my favourite part of the bike. It's a pretty sick looking frame, seems to have good geometry, it feels really good to ride and seems like it'll be pretty strong. Another good thing about the frame is you're not really limited to some of the parts you can use. You can actually run some of the best forks in the market because it has a tapered head tube. That means you can run forks with a tapered steerer like RockShock Pike DJs and Fox 36s. Where the bottom tube and head tube meet is usually where the cracks form on all the bikes I've broken. And this bike has a lot of reinforcements in that place. It's got a bit here that reinforces it. Then it's got the bottom tube, the top tube, and it's just really thick and it's got really nice welds too. So it should be nice and strong, hopefully. On my DD Crypt Keeper, the frame actually cracked where the top tube meets the head tube, or a bit back from that. And yeah, there is a little bit of a crack forming under the bottom tube here. There's also a crack um, up here too. And there was also a crack in behind the sprocket there, as you can see. But don't get me wrong, this frame's lasted the longest out of any dirt jump frame I've ever had. It was definitely a good frame. But this one, I reckon, because it's aluminium and won't kind of rust from the inside, I think that's really what happened to this one. Even though it's got all the rust protection and that, still um, let go in the end. This one's aluminium and it's pretty bulky in all those parts where I managed to crack that one. So 
Hopefully this frame will last. So far I haven't had any problems with it. And you can also put a derailleur on here. So if you want to race four cross or dual shawl, I can't really say it right, but you get what I mean. Yeah, it'd be good for that too. The only negative things I can really think about the frame are like the logos are just stickers, but this is just on my one anyway. I think all the ones from now on have the logo painted. It was just because this was one of the first ones and they're just working out the logo placement and that. And probably the only other thing is the top tube is pretty high. It might be just because it's so thick, but usually I'm used to a frame with a bit lower top tube, but feels good still and another good thing about the frame is if you do manage to break it it has a lifetime warranty so you'll get another one anyway i thought my dd also had a lifetime warranty but it turns out it's only if it's like a manufacturing defect if you break it yourself you just get like a discount on another one i'm pretty sure but they don't even make these anymore so can't even do that anyway i ended up swapping the cranks over because the chain was either too short or too long like when it was too short, the tire was hitting up here and when it was too long, it was like halfway off the back. So just chuck these on instead. But at the end of the day, I've been riding this bike for two months with the stock parts, just as hard as I would with my old bike. And I didn't actually break anything. The only things that happened, like I said, the spokes came loose and also the sprocket came loose. I was pretty harsh on some of the parts, but I'm just being honest and telling you guys what I personally think. But maybe you guys might like some of these parts more than I do. I'm used to riding high rise bars, so of course I'm not gonna like these ones as much. I'm used to stiff forks, so of course I'm not gonna like these ones as much. Once I got used to riding these parts though, I was able to ride at my regular abilities, so none of these parts set me back at all. Alright guys, I'm going to wrap this review up. The Maverick Dirt Dog is a great entry level bike. I would recommend it to anyone that wants to get into dirt jumping or maybe you have an old clapped out dirt jumper and you're on a budget and want to get a new one. I would also recommend this to you. The good thing about the Maverick Dirt Dog, it comes with like the regular entry level spec and it's still a lot cheaper than what some other companies are trying to sell their entry level spec bikes. Plus you got the lifetime warranty on the frame. You got free shipping too. If you are interested in getting a Maverick Dirt Dog but a bit spectacle, they have a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you don't like it, you can always send it back and get your money back too. If you want to get a Maverick Dirt Dog, they're out to the public now. So go cop one if you like. I'm sure Maverick will take care of you and probably chuck in some merch and stickers because they'll be stoked to sell their first few bikes. And if you want to get the Maverick Dirt Dog even cheaper, you can use my code, which is just Greg, and you'll get $39.95 off of it. So pretty much $40. And that'll bring the total down to $759. If you want to see the Dirt Dog in action when it was stock, check out my last video. And if you want to see the video where Angus from Maverick Bikes drops the bike off and we put it together and talk about it, check out that video. So my future plans for this bike is probably build up some new wheels for it. Obviously the parts I chucked onto it were from my old bike, so that's why it's got the yellow wheel in that, just for the people that don't know. Anyway guys, I'm still working on the shed, that's why there's like a fair bit of an echo in here. Anyway, I've talked so much this video, I'm gonna wrap it up here. Thanks for watching, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next one.